That's it. I can't take it anymore. Hal has disrespected Kirby for the last time. And by that, I mean Hal has forgotten Kirby. Seriously, when was the last Kirby game we got? Return to Dreamland Deluxe, a remake in February 2023. 23! Hal doesn't care about Kirby because they forgot about Kirby. Sure, they did mention about three months ago that they're hiring for more Kirby games, and okay, Kirby did get ranked number one coach in college football, and I'll admit, we do have 17 Kirby games on the Switch, but none of those things count. Hal has forgotten Kirby. They took my only food, and now I'm gonna starve. Okay, okay, I'm obviously being dramatic here for the sake of a bit. Clearly, we just need to wait a little bit longer for the next Kirby game, and I am glad that the devs are getting the proper time to work on it, but I do feel the Kirby drought happening right now. Well, as far as the games are concerned, anyway. Between light novels, merchandise, manga, especially fan animations on YouTube, Kirby's doing really well for itself as a franchise right now. But if you're like me and enjoy the actual games more than anything else, you're probably pretty hungry for more. I am hungry for more generous folks out there who would like this video and subscribe to my channel if they enjoy Kirby and Kirby speedrunning, which I would hope is more than 60% of you, but that doesn't seem to be the case, sad puppy face. But I digress. Still, when I was doing my bit earlier, I promise it was just a bit. I love Hal. I don't mean anything that I said. I'm sorry. I wasn't lying about the citations. More jobs are available for game devs to work at HAL, which is always fantastic. Now, Kirby Smart was named the best college football coach of the year by ESPN, which... I don't know, I guess that's cool. As a puppy of refined taste, I don't watch sports. And most importantly, we have 17 Kirby games on the Switch. Yes, we're in a current drought, but there are so many games available right now to play just on the Switch. We'll be fine. But some of you may be countering my point with, Okay, but I've played these games already. I want more. You're like a Disney princess, but instead of being enchanted by magical wonders, you're posting on Twitter about how much you want to inject Kirby into your veins. And if you're familiar with me or my videos, you may already know what's coming. And if not, I already told you what you should do, tee hee hee. But speedrunning is a really fun way to go back to a game you really enjoy and add replay value and depth to it. It's how I got into speedrunning even. A different topic for a different video, of course. But with 17 Switch Kirby games on here, you'll find something you enjoy, I'm sure. A common response that I get when suggesting people to give it a shot is, But I can't speedrun! And my response to that is, yes you can, just pick up a controller and try going as fast as you see fit. You worry about the rest later. I never really see it as a legit reason to not speedrun, but I do have to admit, 17 games is a lot. There's some Claire Fluffle lure here. My favorite food is peanut butter, creamy in particular, yum yum. It is very dog coated. But if someone were to present me with 17 jars of peanut butter and just told me to pick one that looked the most appealing, I'd either have a panic attack or eat them all, Ed style. So to finally talk about what this hecking video has been titled, we're here to rank every Kirby game available on the Switch by their any percent speedruns. Unlike most of my rankings, which basically boil down to, it's my opinion, so just give me some head pats, please, thank you. There are a few rules to this. Notably, rather than this being just my opinion, I'm more so focusing on external factors. Things like length, accessibility, difficulty, how cool they look, stuff like that. My opinions are going to seep their way into this to an extent. Y you can't be wholly unbiased, even if you're a professor puppy like me. But my personal ranking would be quite different from this one. Also, I went with any percent just because it's the easiest to understand, but I'll be factoring in some other categories too, kind of like a bonus category kind of thing. If a game has more than one any percent, it is possible speedruns are nuts, I'll go with the default. I'm also not factoring in gunning for a world record, these are more so using optimized strats to beat these games very quickly and get new personal bests or PBs for you to try and beat. Finally, if you really enjoy the video and would like to go the extra mile, I do have a Patreon where you can become a pup train. 
Link is in the description if you're interested in neat perks, including early access to videos like this. Special thanks to my head padding fluffle fan puptrins, Biohazard, Vilafar, the serval that likes strawberry pop tarts, Lydia Scribe, and remember, Miss K says the four best game is super cool and awesome and stuff. I love you all. Speaking of loving things, let's get started! Starting off with the D tiers, what could the worst Switch Kirby speedrun possibly be? Why, it's... Yeah, this one shouldn't be surprising too many people. I still personally vouch that all Kirby speedruns are good, to varying degrees of good, but still good. But it's really hard to recommend a Dream Buffet speedrun to anybody. Heck, I know I'm an Anarch puppy and all, but I already need to break my rules because Dream Buffet just doesn't have an any percent. Every race, minigame, and battle is timed, so any percent just wouldn't be possible. And if I bend the rules for 100%, and being insanely generous here, we assume you get world record? That's 18 and a half hours long of a speedrun. Yeah! Every other game on this list has at least one any percent, so Dream Buffet is the only victim of the no any percent disease, as I've uh, just uh, <laughs> deemed it. Whether or not you want Dream Buffet on the bottom because it just doesn't have an any percent, or because it takes so long, or because you just don't like it, that's up to you. Now, I'm not a picky pup, I'm just here to spread the love and get some head pads. That said, I haven't really talked much about the run itself, but there really isn't much to say. The online is banned, you set the CPUs to easy for consistency. I guess I did make a video about the 100% speedrun for this game, if you want to know more about it, check it out here. I will be running that hundo category soon also, don't you worry, I haven't forgotten. But otherwise, there is not much to say. We do have one more D tier though, and it's... It's... Another one that shouldn't surprise channel familiars, Kirby's Avalanche is admittedly a very unique Kirby speedrun. I say this because there is no reason to ever run this game because better games and better speedruns are easily accessible. I am, of course, talking about Puyo Puyo. Avalanche is based off of, and by that I mean an exact carbon copy of, the first multiplayer Puyo game, which is unfortunately not very good. Future Puyo games are much better, and if we're strictly talking accessibility, then you can't do much better than either of the Puyo Tetris games and Champions, all of which are available on PC and Switch, among other things. There are a lot of reasons why those are much better games, and not to mention better speed games, but since this is about Kirby, just know that Puyo 1, and Kirby's Avalanche 2 by extension, controls poorly, is very repetitive, and doesn't require much in terms of strategy. It still isn't bad. Working around janky controls in speedruns has its own charms, but I wouldn't recommend it before basically any other Puyo game. But hey, the game currently has more active players on speedrun.com than any of the other Puyo games, so what do I know? I know that you skip the cutscenes in this run, so you don't get to hear any of the dialogue, so yep, D tier speedrun, moving on. Speaking of moving on, though, we are done with the D tiers and are moving on to the C tiers. C tier singular. There's only one run here, and that is. Remember how I said earlier that this list is less my own opinion? Well, here's some living proof of that. I love this game and I love this category, but there are things holding it back. Notably, despite its availability on Switch Online, Game Boy 2, so you don't have to pay the obnoxious $50 for it, it's just the obnoxious $20 instead, this is arguably the least accessible speedrun we're talking about today, and that's because of how this game controls. I have nothing against gyro controls, and while I don't think the gyro controls, ew, is a real argument in any sense, grr, it makes me one angry pop. The having to do this for long lengths of time with no breaks hurts me argument is not one that I think you can ignore. Even I can feel it if I play the game for too long. And I'm the peak of physical health, a physically disabled trans YouTuber who spends her free time sitting on a chair working on videos. So if it hurts me, that's serious business. For, for real though, this is the main reason I have Tilt and Tumble ranked so low. The run itself is really fun, with several speedy tricks, glitches, and moments that'll make any spectator go, I'm sorry, what? Truly the mark of a great speed game. 
I do talk about it in more detail in a video I made when it came out on NSO, click over there if you're curious, but if you can physically handle it, I would very much recommend giving it a chance. In the worst case, even if you don't like the run, you get to play Tilt and Tumble again, that's a win in my book. With that, we move on to the B tiers, easily the most populated tier on this list. So let's not waste any time and talk about the next game, which is... Now, this one may come as a surprise. Kirby Superstar is a fan favorite, despite what dark, decrepit corners of the internet may try and tell you. It's a great game, certainly the most innovative one in the series, but none of that matters right now. The only thing that matters is the speedrun and... Well, it's complicated. And by complicated, I mean everyone who runs KSS hates it. And by hates it, I mean loves it so much that they will consistently and constantly try running it over and over and over and over and over again. A relatively big video released recently about this being the hardest any percent of them all. And while I strongly disagree with that, I understand the notion. I mean, clickbait and all, yeah, but the run itself is very difficult. Mixes and nearly frame-perfect inputs, wall clips, angling jet, quick kills on bosses, abusing glitches and bugs, you even get to use plasma in Milky Way Wishes for good measure. For those who don't know, with the literal frame after you attack with plasma, you can start charging for your next shot, and you can get full charge ridiculously fast by pressing down and right, then up and right, or any combination of directions that won't crash the game, Yes, doing up and down at the same time will crash the game. It's, it's Kirby Superstar. You should expect to crash the game at one point. Plasma is great for bosses, but murder on your hands. It isn't even the hardest speedrun for a superstar. I've literally injured myself trying to learn a great cave skip in Hundo to let you know how extreme this can get. And, and it was a neck injury too. Admittedly one that piggybacked off of a previous neck injury. Yeah, my neck's been through the ringer. Point is, I, I can't recommend this game for people to run because it's so absurdly difficult. Superstar Ultra would lose in terms of accessibility, but in most other categories, it's a pretty clean win and would place a lot higher on this list. So there's that too, I guess. But it can't be any lower than this because... Come on, it's Kirby Superstar. This game is so cool. I, I love it casually like you wouldn't believe. But genuinely looking at a lot of this tech, learning it, and applying it to a full run is part of the why I even suggest people learn speedrunning in the first place. If you're up for the challenge, I would easily recommend you try this game out. Despite everything, I do have it in the B tier for a reason. And not all of the tech is hard, most of it winds up being insanely funny too. I like killing bosses by attacking their butts. Oh, and you already know Puppy's got a video for that one. Go, go check it out for some butt-tastic action. <laughs> now for the other traditional Super Nintendo Kirby game. Dreamland 3 is a personal favorite of mine, both casually and for speedrunning, so why do I have it ranked so low? Simply put, it's your thumb. Well, moreover, it's coup, and to a lesser extent, kind, I guess, but it's what they do to your thumb, your right thumb, that makes this one a toughie to recommend. Now, unlike Superstar, this one isn't particularly difficult. <laughs> Au contraire, I'd actually say it's very simple and accessible in terms of what you need to know and how simple the game is. When you're not going after the heart stars, the game is very welcoming and enjoyable for anybody, and of course, it's a wonder to look at, too. But if you want to go fast, you're using Koo. And if you want to go fast with Koo, you need to dash. How do you dash, you may ask? Just double tap left or right, like with regular Kirby, you may think. <laughs> Poor you. I, I don't want to ruin your purity, but if I must. To dash with Koo, you press B. And when I say that, I don't mean you press the button to make them continuously dash, or you hold it down and Koo will keep going like Kirby. No, pressing B will make Koo do a dash, then going back to normal speed right after. To make Koo go fast, you need to mash. It is a murder on your thumb, but the results speak for themselves. 
personally, this has never been too much for me, but I know a lot of people who've had to quit running the game due to the damage it did to their thumbs. And outside of Kine Underwater, which also requires mashing B, just a lot less of it compared to Q, there's no alternative to this. No easier ways of moving quickly enough to be considered any percent worthy? Sure, Hundo uses Ku less, and there's gimmicky categories out there that may exist, like Coolest or Boss Butch, what have you. But we're just looking at any percent here, and in this any percent, a simple and fun run clashes with the absolute butchering of one of your fingers. Or I, I guess thumbs aren't technically fingers, right? Something weird like that? Yeah, I don't know. Physical health is more important than speedrunning, so KDL3 ranks lower. That being said, there is a very slight caveat to all of this. The leaderboards on SRC, or speedrun.com, don't allow this, and so why I'm still ranking KDL3 this low, but this game has been ran with a turbo controller in the past. Unsurprisingly, being allowed to hold the button down instead of getting early arthritis remedies a lot, if not all, of the issues this category has. So let this be a warning or a word of advice or a thinly veiled excuse to get head pads. Take your pick. But if you run this with a turbo controller, this shoots up from 13th to... I don't know, somewhere in the S tier. Take your pick. There's a lot of video left. Please understand where I'm coming from. Wow! Three traditional Kirby games in a row. All for games and runs that I really like, too. Hmm, one sad puppy today. Anyway, unlike the previous two, it makes a bit more sense as to why Adventure would be lower on a list for newcomers. It's an archaic game compared to everything else that's available. The controls aren't quite what many are used to from the later games. Do I need to mention the lag? This is actually the game I would personally pick for the hardest any percent Kirby speedrun, even more than Superstar. Unlike Superstar, which is mostly about getting used to what makes KSS so jank, Adventure has a lot of really difficult little things that pile up to make it really hard. That said, the major things are mostly pretty simple. The tornado through the levels is overpowered, you gotta use hammer for 7-2, stuff like that. Now, I'm not going over UFO percent for this, but that one is actually even more difficult. <laughs> Worth it for being even more fun, at least I think so, but what do I know? I hope I would know a lot given I'm, I'm making this video and all, but alas. I think, despite the difficulty, this one is actually more accessible than either of the Super Nintendo games we talked about already. It doesn't murder your thumb like KDL3, and the big crazy tricks are easier and less painful than the big stuff in KSS. Again, little things like lag reduction and having your inputs eaten are what make adventure so hard. No legit part of the plan you can route accordingly for, and it's very interesting, but still. And maybe placing it above the previous two games is a mistake, but I think the general easiness of the basics is good enough to carry a newer player through. I feel like if someone were to speedrun any of these three games, they're most likely to finish Adventure. If you can use Tornado effectively and you know when you need to get rid of it, you'll be fine. It's a real shame that I had to rank three any percents that I really enjoy in a row so close to the bottom, but as I always say, I think all of these runs are good. I don't mind placing the others higher because, well, Kirby is fun. It's always adventure. Tornado good. After all of those traditional games, wow, does it feel weird placing this one higher. I love this game and all, but the Japanese-only 90s puzzle game with Chef Kawas Arson is not what you'd expect on a speedrun list. It definitely helps that, unlike Avalanche, this is wholly original. It's a direct sequel to the Game Boy Star Stacker, sure, but it isn't a clone of a game from another series. Star Stacker was its own unique idea, and this one is... Super. <laughs> Falling block puzzle games can be a bit hard to get into, but thankfully this game is relatively simple. Match two characters and watch the stars fall. Wrapping your head around how these kinds of games work can be tough, but once you have a good idea of what to do, the pieces fall into place. <laughs> Anyway, I placed this game a bit lower since it is a bit harder to learn than a simple platformer, but being Kirby, it's still accessible enough. Plus, despite being in Japanese, you can very easily learn how the game works with the mission mode. For the sake of this video, I opted for story mode any percent, which is basically just mauling everyone in sight up to day to day. 
grill escapes for today. If you're in the know for this game, you're probably wondering why I'm not docking points for RNG manipulation, because yes, to get world record times, you're basically required to do a very precise set of movements to beat the computer. That can be hard to learn, but it's not required for a simple run. Remember, this isn't based off the world record grind, just that PB hunt. This is also a really, really short speedrun, maybe too short even. This is fine for when you're learning, but once you get better at it, you may want to dive into something deeper. Thankfully, the game offers plenty of speedy challenges for those who enjoy it, so at least there's something. The run looks really simple, and it is varyingly so. It can be super easy or super precise, depending on what you want. And if nothing else, that fits the true spirit of Kirby more than any of these other runs. Ah yes, Kirby Fighters 2, another game with an any percent that's very easy to define. There is totally not a story mode to any percent, as well as an arcade mode to any percent as well. Truly, we are blessed to... I don't feel like finishing the joke this time. We're going with the story mode any percent on this one since you start the game with it and kind of expect the story mode to be what you need to any percent. I love single handed mode, I really do, but it's only fair to give credit where credit is due. I guess I sounded like I said the same word, but they're spelled different. It's okay. It's got decent ability variety and the nature of stat boosters makes it unpredictable and fun. In particular, getting lots of attack up boosts with hammer for chapters three and four is inherently satisfying, seeing as how ridiculously strong Hammer always is. It's no Kirby Clash, which can reach up to 300,000 damage, or 30,000 as I've been recently corrected on, whoops, but given most enemies have, like, I don't know, three to 600 HP, I think we're good here. It's also fun on Sword and Fighter 2. Sword is specifically used for chapters one and two because you start the run from a fresh save. And because this is a post-2010 Kirby spin-off, abilities aren't abilities, they're selectable characters that, in this game, need to be unlocked. Sword is your best option until you get Hammer, and you get Hammer in Chapter 3. Sword in this game is... not great, but it's fast against CPUs who stand in one spot all day. What do you think is going on in their heads? I could take a good guess. Fighter, of course, benefits too, since it can charge up a red Hadouken to absolutely shred health bars in Chapter 5. Everything prior to that is too short to really make needing to wait for stat boosters worth it, but the long Chapter 5 grind is at least way more fun this way. Speaking of Chapter 5, though, something that does hold this any percent back is the repetition of it all. Going from sword to hammer to fighter definitely alleviates some of the repetition, and having great boss fights helps too, but most of the run is just wailing on CPUs and getting attack boosts, and maybe something like charge or HP boosts if attack isn't available, rinse repeat. I know when I played casually, I disliked Chapter 5 so much, I swore that I would never play it again. And I still haven't! Hey! Speedrun makes Chapter 5 a lot more fun, Fighter gets to go nuts and all, but 50 battles after everything you've already been through is a bit much. The Kirby Speedrunning Relay Race, or K-Star 2024, is hosting Kirby Fighters 2 any percent this year, and it isn't even requiring the full run. Chapters 1 through 4 are all that are needed for this relay, which speaks of volumes to the repetition of Chapter 5. It does have some good highlights for sure, and I know at least one of the runners participating in K-Star is going to disagree with me on it, but she's beast, so it's fine. But even Chapter 5 being a big dumb stupid head doesn't change how much fun this run is. And I'm actually running it for K-Star this year! Isn't that crazy? Okay, so this is a wild one. It basically has everything great you could want out of a speedrun, with the caveat that I'm gonna get out of the way now. This game is hard. Like, really hard. It gets a lot easier once you know what you're doing and have general strats in mind, but getting to that point is just not gonna be worth it for a lot of people. Of course, you know what I think at this point, game's based, I love the heck out of it, but it is quite the toughie. Once you get past that initial barrier of entry though, it's all a blast. <laughs> The devs really took golf, a game known for its peace and quiet, if you like that sort of thing, man, I wish Epic Yarn was on Switch, and made it so intense, fun, the fact that they did that is wild. 
Dream Course does not have simple courses beyond the first world or two, and you get so many options for how to get through it. Honestly, it can all feel overwhelming. Again, it's why it's only number nine, when there's so much cool tech on display. But to briefly go over some of that cool tech... Bounce shots, trajectory once you bounce, the power of your shots, increasing speed, increasing speed after a bounce to go farther, positioning, slopes, water, bottomless pits, HP management, hole manipulation, timing your shots, avoiding mini boss attacks, <gasps> warp pads, needle and stone positioning, not getting hole in ones, and of course, with this being a speed run, on the fly management to make sure that you don't make mistakes and can bounce back or recover, I guess you don't always have to bounce, ah, uh, laugh, in the worst case. Funny thing is, any percent still winds up being the most generous run of them all for Kirby's Dream Course. If a run involves needing gold and medals, it's gonna be harder since now you need to plan your hole in ones. If you're doing extra mode, well, it's harder because the courses in extra mode are gonna be harder. And any other run is either gonna be gimmicky and not worth it, or undiscovered and well, undiscovered. You could be the one to discover it, though. Learn Kirby's Dream Course any percent and experiment with other runs. Be the pioneer that you've always wanted to be. I'll just keep puppying it up and talking about Kirby for now. You do the hard work and I'll also do the hard work. <laughs> What's not hard work is playing the games that are in the A tier. Aw, oh, yeah, B tiers are over. Onto the A tier, baby! And the game we start with may surprise you. But first, have you ever wondered what I smell like? Hey, 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 don't click off the video, I promise this isn't anything weird. I'm just saying, if you want to know my scent, I have a candle! It is called the Vanilla Falafel Scented Candle, and I think it came out really, really well. At the checkout, you can either decide to get a normal candle or one with a wooden wick if you like to hear that crackling sound. I don't think that's it, but that's the sound that I wanted to make in the moment. Not only is this website a trusted source, and you can have a little more fluffle in the house, and if you use the link in the description down there, you will also be supporting me for no extra cost. Thank you very much again to Candle for this opportunity. This isn't a sponsored video or anything. I just wanted to let you guys know I have a candle now. Now, on with the video. Like I just said before bringing up my scent. No, I don't get why that's so weird. Why do you ask? This game being at the center may come as a shock. Mostly if you're a channel familiar, but if you've ever played Kirby 64 and thought, wow, <laughs> this game is really, 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 really slow. <laughs> You'd be right. Kinda. See, the reason why it places so <clears throat> low is because of the base speed. You can argue until the pups come home if this is a bad thing casually, but the controls in physics can feel very stiff while you're speedrunning. The real fun of any percent, thankfully, comes from abilities. You don't use a big variety of them. Aside from boss fights, it's really just solo burning or double burning, but these are two really good abilities to use for a full run. Double burning is easier to explain and use. You just gotta use it. Like, that's it. Wow, my, my explanations are so deep and complex. They're just like my thoughts. So amazing. Anyway, double burning is mostly useful for parts of the game that don't involve complex terrain. It has a lot of end lag on it. Getting stuck on something can be really bad news. <laughs> Thankfully, Kirby 64 has decidedly not complex terrain, so double burning is double epic. As for regular burning, this one is super interesting since you can cancel the ending animation or lag of it with a float. Meaning you can use burning, cancel into an air float, puff right away, and do burning again. It's really fast and in many areas is even faster than double burning. It's a case-by-case -case basis on which is faster, but I'm personally a huge fan of how fun it is to get the timing down on solo burning. You can just mash the float too, that works well enough, but come on! Where's your sense of adventure? Your sense of fun! Yes, I fit the bill for puppy very well, why do you ask? Kirby 64 is a great run because of its simplicity. I do have to dock points for its speed. We are 
speed running here. I, I can't say a game this slow should rank much higher, but what works about it works so well that I can't help it. Since you largely only use these two abilities, it it's a great game to try first as well. It's a bit of a shame that this one is locked to the expansion pass if you're looking to play on Switch though. Another reason why I had to move it down, but what can you do? I don't know if I'd say this is worth $50 just for this, but for everything else you get, yeah, I don't know. I'd still say it's not worth it, and it's better off finding, like, a cheap Wii or something and just getting it there. But my point is, this is a fun game to speedrun, okay? <laughs> if you thought placing Kirby 64 higher was a surprise, oh boy. On the one hand, this is arguably the worst received Kirby game of them all, at least regarding the more traditional ones. On the other hand, I literally had this at number one in the thumbnail. <laughs> So, did I lie in that thumbnail? Did a YouTuber put something that looks surprising in the thumbnail to try and garner more attention, even if it made it a lie? Yeah. Star Ally, similar to Adventure, has a lot of tech that you need to learn, but in a game that's much, much easier to handle. Sure, air bomb spam can be tricky, and sure, getting your timing with Sizzle Meta Knight right and avoiding enemies, not what I'd call easy. But Star Allies is actually a stable game, allowing for a much more intuitive run all around compared to those earlier games. Despite what I've been kinda implying throughout the video, a speedrun being difficult is not inherently a bad thing. Rather, a speedrun being difficult because it doesn't come naturally is an accessibility issue. Now, for example, let's talk about Sizzle Meta Knight. I talk about air bomb spam, but I already did in this video here. Give it some more watch time, thank you. More to the point, when you beat Meta Knight in World 2, you can throw a friend heart at him to FOREST FRIENDSHIP! Meaning you don't have to waste time going to a dream fountain to get him on the roulette. Once you FOREST FRIENDSHIP! You can use a fire enemy to give him the sizzle element. This is done for shuttle loop since well, you can tell by the footage, but he goes really, really fast. The inputs for this are moderately tricky to get used to, down into up B for the actual shuttle loop, but then you need to jump cancel it into another shuttle loop before a Mennonite slows down. Between enemies that can hurt you, getting the timing down, and pesky ceilings and walls that can knock Kirby right off of Mennonite, it's all tricky stuff. Of course I mean that in the best way possible. Star Allies level design in many ways isn't very good, but for any percent, it, it just works. These are all enjoyable levels to blaze through, these are fun bosses to learn how to cheese with Bluster Bomb, and what do you know, there's only one mix and the setup is kinda bonkers. I, I personally enjoy World 4 the most, you get Sizzle Mennonite for all of it, and well, I just don't like World 3 very much even though you have Mennonite for that, no, more so casually, but I'm filthy enough to have that simmer into my thoughts on the run. It happens. With the difficulty being fair and fun and everything else working out in your favor, the only thing really holding this game back are, ironically, the updates. 1.0 was definitely peak any percent for this game, because with every update, when you delete your save data to start a new file, therefore being able to start a new run, you need to sit through the Dream Friend unlocked animations every single time. You can't skip them, and there are nine of them. They're gonna, gonna nurry out here for a second. These take about three seconds each. Plus, you can't forget that initial pop-up saying, Whoa, you have friends now, even if it's Forest Friendship. That's awesome. I'm making it closer to like half of a minute. It may not sound like much, but if you're gonna do this multiple times, oh my god, it's a lot of time. There's also some tech that got patched out, but if you've never ran the game before, it's not really gonna affect you, so that's nice. On the whole though, Star Allies, fantastic speed game, plus there's so much for you to do once you blaze through that story mode. Highly recommended. Ooh, wow, talk about a surprise. Kirby's Dream Land 2, casually speaking, is my least favorite of the traditional Kirby games. Ranking it as high as I am is a great example of how speedruns can make you appreciate something you may not like that much. Of course, I do think Dream Land 2 is a good game, kinda, but when you factor in any percent, some other categories too, we're just gonna focus on any percent for simplicity's sake, it reaches new heights. Similar to Dream Land 3, you're using Koo for almost the whole thing with sprinkles of kind here and there. 
And yes, Koo's dashing works just like it did in Dreamland 3, but with one crucial difference. The max speed you can get requires way less button mashing. That was the big thing that held Dreamland 3 back, and while I think Dreamland 3 is the better run if your thumbs can handle it, that's a pretty big if. Dreamland 2 is living, Dreamland 3 is slowly dying. Obviously, a lot is shared between KDL2 and 3, but for some KDL2-specific stuff, Kubla's Cutter is your go-to. Burning in this game is good, definitely worth picking up here and there, but Ku's movement is already so good that you don't need the mobility boost as much as you need a damage boost. And for Ku, it don't get better than this. If all three of the leaves are, uh, are they feathers? What are they, cutter blades? Whatever Ku shoots out, I don't know. They hit their target, and the damage dealt is pretty massive. And not as good as Rick plus Needle, of all things, but given Ku moves so hecking fast, yeah, I'd say it's dummy shine. This is more of a silly note to end on than anything, but if you want to save some epic time, you need to play this game on file 1. See, when you beat a boss and their HP disappears, basically when it's replaced by the normal point system that the levels use, the game considers the next world unlocked. You can soft reset, or use the switch menu, I guess, it's slower, but you do you, go nuts, to save time, but if you don't pick file 1, you obviously lose time by having to stress over pressing up or down on the D-pad. Total anguish! All in all, Kirby Streamland 2 is a great run. If you don't have any of the Kirby games, but do have the base online service and want to use abilities, well, there's still a game that's better that I think you can do that we'll get to later, but KDL 2 is a wonderful pick. And if you don't want to use abilities, but have all those other things, may I suggest... Of course this was gonna rank highly. I mean, come on, it's, it's Kirby's Dreamland, the most speedrun game in the series, with almost 500 runs submitted for the normal mode on SRC alone. A run so accessible it only takes around 15 to 20 minutes, yet with so many moving parts that you could spend hours on hours practicing strats and improving your time. It's hard to place it super duper high, since abilities are so important to Kirby, and the only ability here is your ability to love. But this run is still one of the best. There isn't much to explain. I'd be more than happy to talk about Curry Kill More because I love it so much, but I do a well enough job explaining it in this video. Go watch it. But even just the base movement has so much going on. In particular, knowing when you should take damage. Damage boosting in KDL1 is really important, as it's the only way to increase your speed. When you get hit, you get launched in the direction that you touch the enemy from. So, if you bonked a Waddle Dee on the right, Kirby gets shot over to the right. Obviously, health is a limited resource, and going out of your way to get food costs time. Time is also a limited resource, which sounds like a dumb puppy sentence, but when you're PB grinding, it most certainly is limited, so planning this out is all part of the... Plan. Oh, yeah. There's also small optimizations, like inhaling close to an enemy or object, so you lose less time on waiting for them to be inhaled. This is still really cool, just, just less obvious. Well, I guess a lot of this stuff isn't obvious, otherwise everybody would do it, but you, you know what I mean. Or at least I hope you do. <laughs> Similar to Superstar Stacker, there is also a fairly heavy amount of RNG manipulation if you're running for a world record, but since we're just talking about beating your own best times, I don't really hold that against it. Despite the amount of little things that you need to learn, which one could argue makes it too hard, come on, it's KDL1! Four levels in a boss rush, whatever difficult tech there is, you can just learn that at your own pace. It's well put together like a modern Kirby game with the simplicity and appeal of a classic Kirby game. You can't go wrong with this one. Speaking of runs that you can't go wrong with, S tier time, let's go! <laughs> These final four runs are the easiest recommendations I can give, at least at the time of this recording. Accessibility is always changing, and once the Switch becomes irrelevant in like 50 years, this list is certainly going to change, but at the very least, this should hold up for 2024. I really, really hope this doesn't age poorly. <laughs> anyway, let's get started on our S tier any percent Kirby speedruns. Yahoo! I'm gonna be honest, gamers, this one 
was a close call to not put in the S tier. It would be number four regardless. This run is amazing and deserves every second of being in the S tier it gets, but oh, yikes at only being available through the expansion pass on Switch. And base Switch Online is an easier pill to swallow, but $50 a year for what is barely worth the upgrade. Actually, let me reword that. Isn't worth the upgrade. Really bad for accessibility. There's also a decent amount of RNG in the run, but mostly nothing that would get in the way of enjoying races with friends, PB runs, practicing, all that good stuff. Losing your ability in one hit takes some time getting used to as well, but you'll find sooner rather than later that there isn't much of an issue thanks to things like routing, avoiding enemies, and general hard work. Pat yourself on the back when practicing these games, you really deserve it. Everyone calls Kirby games easy, but when you try speedrunning, they get a lot harder. The real reason why this game is in the S tier, and it's pretty obvious once I say it out loud, the customization of it all. Of course there's an optimal early game, but aside from needing to start with World 2 and 5, you're basically free to do whatever order you want. You want to get all of Ocean out of the way early? Go for it! You want to do it last because you just really like using stone to kill bosses or something? I don't blame you, and you can do all of Ocean last, and you're still probably not going to lose any time. The ability variety is also insanely fun. Wheel dominates, of course, but in a way that's bonkers. It can do so much on its own, especially things you wouldn't expect it to do. Kill bosses, move down, jump high. It's so much more versatile than just moving forward, but it isn't mindless either. You need to avoid hitting as many enemies as you can due to Amazing Mirror's insane hit lag, and of course if you hit a wall or something, Kirby goes a bounce and takes a while to recover. You also see UFO, Missile, Stone, Sword, Hammer, Parasol, heck, you even see Mini. No, oh, wait, you don't see Mini in any percent, that that's locked to all sprays. My bad. It's still, what you get here is really impressive, helped by how much fun moving around is in this game. Kirby feels so loose compared to later entries, giving a sense of freedom to even the most basic of movements. And while I was mostly just bringing up all sprays for the sake of a joke, it can't be understated how much variety there is in category options. Collect all sprays, go to every goal game, get 100%, beat the boss endurance, play co-op. So many options to pick from once you've had your fill with any percent. There's so much to do here, so much to practice, and so much fun to be had. I love Amazing Mirror, and unless you absolutely hate it, I definitely think you should give any percent a try. Technically the only remake on this list, Return Deluxe is not only an amazing game, but an amazing any percent game too. My own feelings on it aside, this is another case where there are multiple any percents. Magalor Epilogue, Mary Magaland, 100 Missions for the Curious, and of course, the story mode. Now, obviously, we're talking about the story mode here. We're this far in the video, so I hope I don't need to explain why, but both Magalore Epilogue Any% Percent and Mary Magaland 100 Missions are great runs that I also recommend. But to talk about the story mode, it's the best thing someone who's not familiar with mixes, aka most people, could ask for. In the first room, you run ahead, inhale the knight and the kibble, and try to get wing. The starting point for mix is randomized, so in theory, you can just try mashing until you get it. Of course, you can also try to time it, since the order of abilities in the mix itself is decidedly not random, but I don't know, brain off mashing, kind of fun. So what do you do with wing once you get it? A lot of things, trust me. <laughs> the bulk of it will be using condor head, wing's dash attack, in the air. This is the fastest method of moving around in the entire game, but sometimes you gotta go up too. Well, Wing has a special float that is not a float at all, it's actually flying, and it is the fastest method of moving up in the game. Wow, Wing favoritism real much? <laughs> Wing carries the Return Deluxe Any% percent run from start to finish, and while you may assume that makes it easy, it doesn't. Simple, yes, but... There's just a lot going on with Wing's moveset that makes it nearly endless in terms of improvement. Bosses in particular are a major annoyance for many people trying to zoom, but once you get the rhythm of attacking bosses down, hold down, press B, jump cancel, press B, or rinse repeat, things get much more manageable. It's not a short run, but this is an easy recommendation for anybody given the limited ability use and nearly infinite death given to an ability. 
I could also suggest ability solos and ability draft. They're super fun, but again, base any percent only. I'm pouting really hard for this one because I love those two gimmicky runs and Magalore Epilogue and Magaland 100 missions, but hey, what can you do? Hum. All right, I don't need to explain to anybody why Forgotten Land is peak. I mean, I, I will, it's kind of my job here, but chances are, if you're watching this video, you've either played Forgotten Land or you know somebody who has. It's the best-selling game in the series on the still-selling like hotcakes Nintendo Switch. It's also the last fully original Kirby game, at least a traditional one, at the time of this video's upload. Meaning, yeah, on those merits alone, there are tons of reasons to give this game a go. Unlike most of the other traditional Kirby platformers, abilities are much simpler here. Akin to Dream Land 2 or something, abilities really only have two or three moves, max, meaning you don't have to learn much in terms of being optimal with the abilities. Getting better at the game comes more down to things like timing, positioning, and knowledge ding, rather than having to know what moves to use at what point. For simplicity's sake, yeah, that's very nice, although similar to something like Return to Lux, that doesn't make it easy. Forgotten Land has some solid ability variety, including Tornado, Fire, Ice, Drill, even some moves you can use as regular old Kirby find their way into the run. Of course, this is all well and good, but the biggest and most obvious change to this game compared to all the others except Dream Buffet, I guess, is that this is a 3D game. You aren't limited to moving left or right, or up and down, or whatever. You get 360 degrees to move around in, and the speedy tricks and such take full advantage of that. The game wants you to move along in a 90 degree angle, nah, just yoink over bottomless pits, separating these two parts of the level that you need to go through. The enemies giving you a hard time, it's 3D, find a way around them. Unlike Return Deluxe and Star Allies 2, Forgotten Land takes a page from Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot by having necessary Waddle Dees required to advance as well. Routing Waddle Dees for completion is super fun, especially once you get a run-in where you know which ones you need to save and actually act on it. Forgetting which ones you need to rescue in the land <laughs> is easier than I'd like to admit. I guess it could also be the puppy brain talking, who knows? What I'm saying is don't be afraid to take notes. The only real downside to this one is that some of the glitches used in the run are a bit... excessive, I guess we could say. None of them are necessary for PB times, but Hammer Super Jump, or HSJ, has made many experienced runners quit the game, or at the very least confer to any percent no HSJ. If you're willing to butt up with some of the more difficult glitches, or you just don't like HSJ and run its designated Homer's Free Club version, you can't go wrong with Forgotten Land. Easily the best Kirby game on the Switch, and easily among the best any percents on the platform as well. But the absolute best? Oh, who am I kidding? It will definitely surprise you. Okay, take a deep breath, act surprised, and go, what? That's right, Super Kirby Clash takes the cake for best any percent speedrun of a Switch Kirby game. And while there are a bunch of gameplay related reasons why I think this is, the easiest one to explain is that it's free. Every other Kirby speedrun requires real life money in order to run it. And while Magalore may be side eyeing you for some of that paper, clearing the game requires zero dollars and zero cents. But how is this even possible? What ability can be strong enough, powerful enough, God-shattering enough to get past a paywall? Well, duh, it's Hammer. <laughs> Hammer's jumping dash attack is just really, really good, and you can chain two of them together in a single short hop. It's honestly strong enough to the point where you don't really need to use Team Meteor all that much. It saves time in some battles and is certainly recommended if you're struggling, but try to act surprised here. Again, Hammer is just that strong. You may expect materials to be hard to gain too, given you need gem apples to proceed. Well, Super Kirby Clash is not only nice enough to have story and party quests, each with two different stamina bars, meaning you have options while one of your meters is recharging, but it also has the codexes. Depending on which one you get, you can get more materials for using a certain ability. And since the bulk of these battles are going to be done by you going swoosh, 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 yeah, the Hammer Codex is obvious. 
the game even gives you two EXP ups for free, giving you more EXP, which will allow you to level up and reach greater heights. The absolute biggest perk ties the two main points together. Once you have any percent completed, there won't be all that much stopping you from completing the rest of the game. The gem apples are certainly going to prove annoying, but you get so many from completing missions and quests and being overleveled that it won't prove problematic for very long. Now, is clearing every quest and getting 100% gonna be easy? Not quite, but once you're done with any percent, you're not quite speedrunning anymore. Things like taking breaks and playing online will help you with that part, but for clearing the game any percent style, you can do it in under two hours consistently. You don't even need to worry about wiping out a good save, as long as you have another Nintendo account, which is free, easy, and, most surprising of all, very legal. This really is just the run that has everything. Great tech, good length, raw shock value for sure, and as I've said many times, it doesn't cost a dime. I'm sure many would argue it doesn't deserve to be number one, and on my own list, I wouldn't rank it quite so high, but everyone is going to have some kind of caveat running every other game on this list. Unless you literally don't own a Switch, there is nothing stopping you from picking up Super Kirby Clash and going, yeah, Magler can go to heck. I'm doing this for free. That's right, I said heck, and we love that. Maybe Magalore doesn't, but we do. And... Whew, finally, that's the end of the video. Ugh, I'm exhausted, so I've got nothing left. Except, of course, to thank you all again so much for watching. I have been Claire, I hope you all have an amazing day, and I will see you all around. Bye bye Yes, this really is all I have for the outro. This video was so long.